Joey Gamash holds the title, but his road has been much easier. Though a champion, he has never faced the caliber of a Tony Lopez. This is his first true test. Today, two champions' roads converge in Portland, Maine for the WBA Lightweight Championship. For the WBA Lightweight Championship with Joey Gamash defending his crowd against the one-time Lightweight title holder Tony the Tiger Lopez and this championship fight is being brought to you by Valvoline. Hi everybody, I'm Marv Albert along with the WBA Cruiserweight Champion Bobby Chez. And Bobby, this is the most unusual scenario. Joey Gamash is the champion. He's undefeated. He's 29-0. and 0, Yet he looks at this as a credibility fight and going up against Tony Lopez. He feels he needs a win in his career to legitimize what he has accomplished. Well, certainly on paper, Tony Lopez has fought the more credible opposition. The big question has been, who has Joey Gamash fought? I think tonight is his proving ground, the big test in Tony Lopez, who brings more credibility as a challenger into the ring tonight. And Tony Lopez has fought most of his fights near his hometown of Sacramento, California. Now he comes to a Portland, Maine, where Gamash has been such a huge hero. What effect will that have on Lopez? Well, as you can hear, the crowd's chant, and I think that's more pressure for the champion. His title's at stake and on the line. He has to prove in front of his crowd what he's, what he's really worth, what he's all about. Tony Lopez has been in many championship fights. He's seen it all. He's done it all. I think it's no problem. And a look at the tail of the tape. Lopez at 29 years of age with the one-inch height advantage. Gamash at 135, tipping the scales yesterday at the way in Lopez, 134 and a half, and he has the reach advantage. The referee is James Santa under the WBA rules, scoring on the 10-point must system. There's Santa, New York City product, one-time linebacker at uh, the University of Maryland, in fact, had a tryout with the football giants in the mid-70s. Three knockdown rule in effect. No standing eight count. The bell saves the boxer only in the 12th. And final round. This is scheduled for 12. Joey Gamash in his last fight last June here in Portland stopped Chun Chil Sung of South Korea in nine rounds to win the vacant WBA title. The bout was stopped on cuts. Tony Lopez last fight back in June. He stopped Andres Sandoval in the second round in Sacramento. Tony Lopez made mention that early he wanted to establish his jab and beat forward, pushing back Joey Gamash, pushing him back, and he's come out doing just that. Gamash not moving quite as much as I thought he might. Tony Lopez in the tiger strike apparel. His trunks consist of imitation tiger skin, keeping with his nickname, while uh, Gamash said he'd have a, a surprise for us. He's going with what he calls the jungle look in terms of the uh, trunks. I'll tell you, it's kind of heavy. It looks like it's made out of leather. I wonder in the later rounds he can soak with water if that doesn't slow him down just a bit, but he seems to like it. That's his style. We are just underway. One minute gone by. Lopez usually a slow starter. Well, he's apparently changed that a little bit for tonight. He thinks he's got to slow Gamash down, maybe take his body, work it a little bit to get the legs. And he's holding it early, right hand, right hand. And we see him trying to land it. A wrap on Gamash. Yes, he is 29 and 0, but the quality of his opponents has raised questions. The resume, not impressive. He was scheduled to fight then WBA junior lightweight champion Brian Mitchell back in September of 90. And the referee James Santa separates the fighters. Gamash had to cancel because he was involved in an automobile accident, never did go up against Mitchell. Well, he's getting his test here today. I think Lopez is going to give him all he can handle. And right now, I've given a slight edge to Lopez. He's been more effective, pushing Gamash back. Gamash a little tentative, maybe a little nervous. He's, you know, in, that, in the moment now. Just under one minute remaining in this opening round. Crowd of 7,000 at the Civic Center in Portland, Maine. Thursday night, the Boston Celtics played a preseason game here against the Atlanta Hawks. 
One time, this is the home of the Maine Mariners of the American Hockey League. Top farm team of the Boston Bruins. Good uppercut, but the boss came back with the left hand. Nice counter punching by both men. Good uppercut, and then he came back with the right hand. And then it was a left hook by Lopez. I think the fight's heated up to the type of pace that Lopez wants. He's also getting Gamash to come forward and fight with him. A dangerous man, as we know, on the ropes. Final seconds of the first. He's waiting. He's waiting about a car length and a half behind Al Jr. Saturday Sports Showcase is brought to you by Valvoline Motor Oil. People who know use Valvoline. And by Tartar Control Crest, the dentist's choice to help keep your teeth tartar free. Back in Portland, Maine, there's the hometown hero, Joey Gamash, defending his WBA lightweight championship against the one-time IBF junior lightweight champion, Tony Lopez. Joey Gamash, the first world champion crowd in the state of Maine since Muhammad Ali stopped Sonny Liston. That was in Lewiston with the punch that we still have not seen. That was back in May of 1965. Phantom punch. He's a very questionable right hand at best. Gamash has come out fighting a little more than we thought he was going to do. He said, oh, beautiful right hand counter over the jab. I think he just got the respect that he wanted. He said he's got to come out. He's got to gain the respect. He said he can't let Lopez run through him and not respect him. He said, I can punch a little better than they think. Joey Gamash began his boxing career back in 19... Look out. Lopez with a good left hand that rocked Gamash. Give him a right hand too behind that to the temple, and for a split second there, Gamash was definitely stunned. Gamash started boxing at the age of 11, 1977, as a 60-pounder, won a gold medal in the National Junior Olympics at the age of 15, and his late teens picked up much international experience, and then turned pro in May of 1987. Again, Gamash pressed me attack a little more than he's normally than he normally does. He's trying to use a counter right hand over Lopez's jab, and Lopez is also trying to work that right hand over the jab. So you see a lot of right hands landed tonight. They both settled into gaining each other's respect, landing two big shots. The pressure of the moment calmed down a little bit. It's more of a chess game now. Gamash telling us yesterday, and uh, this an interesting theory concerning Lopez that I'm sure Tony Lopez does not agree with. Gamash said Tony Lopez makes easy fights hard. He says he tries to make hard fights easy. Well, he likes to box and not slug and not take a lot of abuse on his body. And so Lopez likes to do exactly the opposite. And Gamash once again did connect with the combination. Gamash's speed here is giving Lopez a problem, especially that third and fourth shot as Lopez picks his head up and is getting caught. Right there, again. Twenty-five seconds remaining. Round two, scheduled for 12, and a very impressive round for Joey Gamash. Joey's setting the pace of the fight. He's making more advances when he wants to, moving when he wants to. He's fighting his fight right now. Lopez is not. As this round winds down, the crowd is chanting for Joey Gamash. It's not easy to pull yourself away from a bowl of Kellogg's raisin. And here you see Gamash countering that jab with a big right hand. And again, the speed is giving a lot of problems to Lopez. It's causing him a lot of difficulty. 
Joey Gamash, very flashy boxer, good counter puncher, has the hand speed, fast feet, can be tough to hit. And we noticed in our conversation with Gamash yesterday that uh, on right above the right eye looked like he uh, took a shot. I know you asked him about it. He said, well, he didn't wear the headgear during recent sparring sessions, and it cost him. Well, what, he's, what he's alluding to was the cage that a lot of fighters used for the last week. And uh, even my trainer, Tommy Parks, has told me we have to start using that cage because that's crunch time. You're right down to the end. You don't want anything to go wrong. Cuts have not been a problem for Gamash in the past. I know you suggested the old Chez remedy, makeup, <laughs> which... Uh, well, you, you, hate to give a, for you hate to give a, an opponent a target to aim for, so I just cover it up. Either that or I'm just vain. This is round three. Live Albert with the WBA Cruiserweight Champion, Bobby Chez at ringside and in Portland, Maine, in the Pine Tree State. I talked to Gamash yesterday, too, about uh, being considered a dirty fighter. He said, well, I don't like to be considered a dirty fighter, but I'll do what it takes to win. And that was it. The speed of Joey Gamash right now is setting the pace for this fight. He's winning the fight with speed. Hitting him with quick counter punches. Uh, in a battle of counter punches, he's the quick of the two, and then he's holding. Lopez with a right hand, and that was answered by Gamash. Again, he's real quick to counter. He's got fast hands. He's a seven-inch shorter in the reach department, yet he's getting there first because he's quicker. Back in July of 88, Tony Lopez won the IBF Junior lightweight title, upsetting Rocky Lockridge. Lost the championship to John John Molina in a wild October 1989 fight that led to the near riot in uh, Sacramento's Arco Arena. Seven months later, Lopez avenged that loss by taking a decision over Molina. However, in September of 91, Lopez lost a decision to Brian Mitchell. And that caused Lopez to leave the 130-pound junior lightweight division. And uh, he's moved up to the 135 lightweight rank. Lopez is trying to work the body a little bit, but he, because he's not quicker, as he comes down into the body, he's got to open himself up for punches. And Gamash is so quick, he just bam, bam, he's right on him. Lopez in pursuit of Gamash, who just walked away in this enormous ring. What, 22 feet inside? Yeah, it's a big ring. 24 outside. I haven't seen a ring this big, I don't think, ever. And here's something I think Lopez has to get back to, that jab. He was more effective in the first round. And right now, he's gotten away from it, just looking to bang hard counter. Closing in to the end of... Round three. Well, people who know use Valvoline. And by Tartar Control Crest, the dentist's choice to help keep your teeth tartar free. It is on to round four here in Portland, Maine. What about the swelling above the uh, left eye of Gamash? Well, there were a couple of good right hands that did land, and as we've uh, made note of, Lopez is the bigger puncher. That's the swelling. Also, it could have been a headbutt because we, a couple of times we've seen him bang heads. Well, this is the 11th championship fight for Tony Lopez. Joey Gamash has boxed a total of 19 rounds, as you saw in his two title fights against competition that would not necessarily be considered top level. Faced Jerry Ingo Benny out of South Africa in a championship fight and Chung Chil Sung of South Korea. While Lopez with the numerous uh, title fights, 10 and all, and he has boxed a total of 108 championship rounds against the likes of Jorge Paez, Rocky Lockwood, John John Molina, Brian Mitchell. Gamash has yet to fight the household name, and Lopez right now is the best of that bunch. How do you have it on the scorecard? 
Actually, I gave the first round just a, just by a hair. I gave to Lopez, but it's been all Gamar since then. Rounds two and three, he established himself using the speed. And something that people don't always pay attention to, fighters that throw quick, quick punches very quick, the speed generates a certain amount of power in itself, like throwing a bullet and shooting it. Only I don't think he's as good at shooting a bullet. Midway through the fourth round. I spent a lot of time thinking about these things, Bobby. I don't know. They just show up somewhere along the way. I'm lucky that I can remember. This round's been a little more effective for Lopez, pushing Gamash back. Gamash has offered up less offense. I don't know if the eye's worrying him at all. Could just be the strength of Lopez. I think Lopez is still a little stronger. Good right hand just now, and I'll tell you, that body attack, I think, is, is making Gamash at least think about it enough so he opens up up top. Gamash attempting to keep Lopez away with the jab, but not able to in this fourth round. Well, again, he started to work the body, Lopez. I'm not sure if, he, if he's gotten to his body enough that he's hurt him at all or made him at least conscious of it. And he's starting to reach him a little more often. So far, I haven't won this round. Not a big round, but more effective, starting to turn the tide to again, the right hand over the jab. And he told me yesterday, right hand, left hook, he wants to land those two clean. Scoring on the 10-point must system, the judges, Stu Winston of Miami, Florida, Albert Walensky of Miami, and Julio Roldan of Venezuela. Big right hand to the body again, and I'm wondering how that's affecting Joey Gamash right now. The jab's still pumping out there, but there's something missing that was there two rounds ago. Rounds two and three, much more effective. Crowd responding to the activity by Gamash, but uh, he was not able to land off that floor. Well, I do watch my figure. She's a beautiful girl. Well, for Tony Lopez, a rare appearance outside of his uh, home area of Sacramento, California, fighting here in Portland. We uh, talked about it with Tony yesterday and asked how does he approach fighting in Joey Gamash's hometown. It's a mind thing, and a lot of people put, a lot of fighters will say, oh, well, it's gonna, it's, it might not do nothing, or the crowd got to me. Well, I kind of figure you either have a weak mind or you have a strong mind. I have a very strong mind. You know, I do whatever I want to do when I want to do it, and that's how I really believe. And so, when I get out there, that kind of ain't gonna affect me at all. Bob, I know that uh, your point of view is that actually there could be more pressure on Gamash in defending his title here in his home area. Sure, because everybody's rooting for him, everybody's expecting so much and, and wishing with their hearts as, as well as their minds that they just want him to win so badly, and, and he's got a lot of pressure on him. There's a lot of people he lets down in his hometown. This is round five. It is scheduled for 12, and Lopez opening up with good combinations. Gamash just caught him with a left hand. What about the swelling, though, above uh, both eyes of Joey Gamage? It's the right hand, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. If there was a couple of head, you know, in inadvertent headbutts, but I don't think that's what it is. I think it's that one right hand. He's kind of turning it over on the rope side of the head, top of the head. And I'll tell you what, if you get it on top of the head, it, it, it's leaving it hurts. And now uh, a mouse under the right eye of Gamage. See, the amount of pressure that Tony's putting on, he's not in overdrive. He's not forcing it in a, in a wild manner, but he's consistently coming forward and trying to basically wear his opponent down. This could be a fight of attrition in a later round. And if we touched on earlier in the past, cuts have not been a problem for Gamash. Gamash, with that combination, he's been doing less of that in the past two rounds. This round and the, and the uh, fourth round, and that's what he had was so effective at. And there it is again. That quick counter on the way in uses Lopez's momentum against him. Crowd responding and at times overreacting to anything that Gamash does. And Lopez stepped, uh, stepped on his uh, shoe. And a good show of sportsmanship. They both touch love. It's nice to see. You only have to hate each other during the flurries. It's a better round for Gamash. Lopez slowed down the attack a little bit. Joey's found some uh, openings and countered a little better. Again, Lopez always stands for that body work. Joey Gamash was in camp with you back in 1985. He mentioned when he was 19. Do you remember? Not really. I, you know. 
now that he pointed it out, I do have recollection of it. But when I'm in training camp, I, I can hardly pay attention to anything but what I'm doing. Crowd again chanting for Gamash. 20 seconds remaining in the fifth round. Marv Albert, Bobby Chez from the Civic Center in Portland. We'll be back right after these messages. We've got a bit. And it is on to round six. Tony Lopez in the tiger striped trunks and Joey Gamash wearing what he calls the jungle look. Well, the jungle look. I thought the jungle was a little more green. Lopez seemed to come out this round with a little more of uh, bad intentions on the punches. <laughs> Joey Gamash, 26 years old, from Bath, Maine, lives in Lewiston, about an hour from Portland. Record of 29 and 0, 18 by knockout. He stopped seven of his last eight opponents. And Tony Lopez, 29 years old, from Sacramento involved in his 11th championship bout. Record of 40 wins, three losses, one draw. He's won 28 by knockout. Big right hand by Gamash. He just looped it right over Tony Lopez's jab. But as is, has been the case, they say he's not a real big puncher, and, and that was the Sunday punch, and Lopez didn't blink too much. Lopez is winding up a little too much, swinging a little too hard to the body and uh, not leading his way in with the jab and some combinations. At one time, Tony Lopez was strictly a wild brawler. He would dangerously stand in front of opponents, trade punches, but he has shown improved boxing skills in the past. They have taken too many punches. Well, he told me the other day, too, he felt as he's getting a little older, not much unlike myself, he's fighting a little smarter because he doesn't have to prove anything as a young man thinks he has to. Mosh not able to connect with uh, that combination. Dropping his hands a la Bobby Chacon, hanging his head out there daring you to hit him. Yes, Lopez likes, uh, likes to do that, which can be adventurous and dangerous, although he says it's a strategic tactic as you mentioned, along the lines of Bobby Chacon. Yeah, he says he likes to get the people to maybe, the fighters that he's fighting, to maybe do it back so he can tag them. An interesting way of thinking about it. Coming up on 10 seconds to go, round six. Kamash getting Lopez in a headlock. Good finish to the round. Everyone calls me father. And I love a kid's cereal. Brave adults wrestle with the notion that Kellogg's Frosted Flakes is just for kids. I work with Tiger. It is on to round seven at the Civic Center in Portland, Maine. What does the uh, Bobby Chez uh, scorecard show? Uh, right now I have a Gamasha head by a point. I think he's been a little... You know, more effective, uh, more steady. And uh, when Lopez really presses him and bangs him hard, he's, he's dominated some of the rounds, but then he's taking some time off. So we'll see what happens in the later rounds. That's where it's going to get interesting. It's funny, Joey Gamash said a good boxer always beats a good puncher. And I said, someone forgot to tell George Foreman, Rocky Marciano, and Joe Lewis that. counter. When he keeps his hands up and blocks punches and counters like that, slips and counters with that speed, that's where he's at his best. What about the swelling in particular about the left eye of Gamash? 
Uh, Lopez's punches are harder, as we talked about, but uh, the swelling doesn't look too bad. Uh, as long as it doesn't close, it shouldn't bother them that much. Fighters, uh, we're kind of used to it. Although I've never seen a world champion with a straighter nose than Joey Lamont. That's true. You really have it. I'm actually injured. Yes, you would notice that. Yes, I would. <laughs> through the seventh round. This is scheduled for 12 for the WBA lightweight title. Big left hook to the belly, right in the solar plexus, and I think it hurt Gamash a little bit. Watch the head, Smells. Watch the head. Let's go. Lopez charging in and nearly got caught. Must be a small cut under Gamash's right eye. I, I can't really tell. Yes, it, it began as a uh, a mouse. Oh, left hand connecting on Lopez by Gamash. That certainly got his attention. That one hurt. That's a slip. And that's the uh, indication from the referee. Good action round. Lopez is landing the right hand with a little more frequency now, as he had earlier. He's gotten back to it, but not, not, you know, getting away from the body attack. He's staying downstairs a lot. Final seconds of the seventh round. He's waiting. Marv Albert. Bobby Chez from Portland, Maine, as we move on to round eight. Tony Lopez putting the pressure on in, in round seven. He started that round a little late, though. I thought that uh, Tomas was a little more effective for the majority of the round, landed a little more cleanly than the one big left hook. Joey's face is starting to get really marked up, and you can see the, the effects from the punches. Big right hand by Gamash, countered by Lopez. Counter punches battle. On the subject of the uh, cuts sustained by Gamash, he actually has two cut men in his corner. Luis Spada, an, an accomplished cut man, and a 77-year-old local retired mortician by the name of Roland Fortin, who also is handling the cuts in the corner of Gamash. This might be an interesting story. There seems to be one spot in the yes. ring where they're slipping regularly. They are having trouble uh, with the footing. Again, it's a right-handed battle. These guys are landing right hands on each other at will on that. Big left hook to the body by Lopez. He's, he's trying to keep that body attack in there. But I think that he's just taking a little too much time sometimes. You can't wait on the Joey Gamash. He's just far too quick. And Gamash with the left hand. Got those quick leaping punches. Tony keeps his head up and he's going to keep getting hit with him. Under a minute remaining. In the eighth round. That right hand was also very effective for Lopez. Crowd chanting for the popular Joey Gamash. I tell you, these next four rounds are going to be the difference. They're going to be all the difference. He's going to have how much left. That uh, cut does not look any better. The cut under the right eye of Gamash, which will get the attention of the two cut men in just a moment. Well, 
I do watch my figure. She's a beautiful girl. But fat-free cereal. Fat-free cereal? I'd rather eat regular cereal and just... Joey Gamash asking his corner who won that round as they feverishly go to work under the right eye. I'll tell you, that's an interesting... Uh, I, I'm, normally, I wouldn't do that. It's just something that wouldn't come to mind. Who won that round? That cut uh, still uh, does not look good. No, and I, I, I wasn't sure what they were using. Whatever it was, they were using a lot of it. Normally, avatine is uh, adrenaline is what's, what's used. But I'm not a mortician, so I'm not sure what yes. he's using. We are into round nine. Lopez just waved Gamash on. I was wondering what that was all about. He hasn't really been running. Bob, I have to pass uh, this along. It's out of the pages of only in boxing. One of the boxers on the undercard could not make it here today. It seems he was arrested yesterday. He's in jail here in Portland, Maine. His manager was asked, do you want to bail him out? He said, no way. Uh, the purse for the fight was only $300. Bail, $500. And we wonder why boxing comes under such scrutiny. Only in this sport. Going on a little story, Gamash got hit with some clean punches. Lopez starting to get to him. He's also throwing less to fend Lopez off. Later rounds, championship rounds, could start to tell here. Once again, the chant for the WBA lightweight title holder, Joey Gamash. Lopez fighting off the ropes. In Gamash's corner, they use the word showtime for the last 15 seconds and try and steal close rounds. I wonder how that's working now. Yeah, they scream uh, showtime, and they, they feel that you can make a uh, major impression on the judges with a strong finish. The last thing they remember, Sugar Ray Leonard was the best at doing that. Coming up on one minute remaining in the ninth round. And what has been a close fight. Yeah, I think this has been a pretty strong round for Lopez. The tide could be turning here, I'm not sure. But uh, it's a good fight. He's landing a lot more cleanly than he had early. Lo Lopez's uh, punch is still heavier. And Gamash's speed is falling just a little. Now, Bobby, you're in there. Do you, do you go for the cut under the eye, or does it not take you off course? Meanwhile, Gamash was able to land on Lopez. Again, he leaped in. He just stuffed that left hand up and just picked him right by the chin. He picked Lopez straight up in the air. I myself wouldn't go aim for the cut, per se, unless it was over the eye. It might want to work it. You know, you know obviously, it's, it's your advantage to work the cut, but with a cut under the eye, I would just go to get the job done. So that will do it for round nine. Mark and my relationship goes way past business. Um. This is round 10 in Portland, Maine. And this is for the WBA lightweight title. Joey Gamash defending his crown against the two-time junior lightweight champion, Tony Lopez. I was under the impression when I came up here that pre-fight there was some bad... Oh, and a right hand, I think he lost his mouth. I was under the impression there was some bad feeling between the fighters, but you can see over the course of the fight, touching gloves more. A lot of respect has been gained on both parts. Yes, the mouthpiece went flying into the second row. But again, a good right hand. Lopez has been getting home with the right hand. You can see the, the result by the damage on Joey's face. Told the, uh, the mouthpiece ended up sliding under the ring and they have not been able to get to it. Gamash just ran into a big right hand and to his credit stood right there. So I think his, his chin's been tested enough times today that even if he doesn't win this fight, he's been legitimized as being the top, top-notch top lightweight. Although I don't know if that is a consolation. Uh, he was concerned about, as you say, being legitimized. We talked about that right at the start. He feels that Lopez gives him credibility because of the, uh, the resume of, of Tony Lopez. Yeah, Lopez's resume is certainly more impressive, but 
I think you can see why now those championship fights, the caliber fights, he's in the big one, in the tough one now. And Lopez is getting to him. He's winning these last couple rounds and he's scoring big punches. What do you have it? Actually, uh, I got uh, Lopez up by just a little bit. And uh, about a point. It's, it's, this is certainly any man's fight. But the tide has been such that Lopez has been more effective as we get a little later into the fight. Gamash with the uppercut. Just under one minute remaining in the 10th. It is scheduled for 12. Lopez has taken his fair share of lumps too, but you can't see it all over his face, which leads you to believe that the punches that he's dishing are certainly better than ones receiving. And in the past, Lopez has been cut, but Lopez now showing more confidence. He's able to land here in the 10th round. Scoring on Gamash, who looks tired and is, and that cut looks bad. Well, you know, to his credit, he's standing there fighting. I think he should be doing more moving, but he's trying to fight and gain the respect he thinks he needs to win. This is not the fight that Joey Gamash should fight against Tony Lopez. I am a pillar of the community, and I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults challenge the notion that... Something that's been happening all night is the right hand's been coming over Joy Gamash's left hand, over his jab, and over his, his hand when it's just down, and it's really starting to get to him. Also, Bob, this has been more of a, a flat-footed type fight. I would think that is to the advantage of Tony Lopez. Yeah, I think in the, in the beginning rounds, where rounds two, rounds three, Gamash would take a few steps, bang, bang, take a few steps, bang, bang, hold. That was the fight he should have fought throughout. Now, you know, Tony Lopez, give him some credit, too. He's put a lot of pressure on. And again, we talked about people standing your ground to get their pound of flesh. He has to gain some respect. Then he's still a young guy who's got a lot of pride. He wants to fight. Round 11, it is scheduled for 12. Tony Lopez looking very fresh. Yeah, and oh, he just ran into a big right hand Gamash. He's in a little bit of trouble. He's in trouble right now. I think, I think this is the end of the fight. Tony Lopez putting Joey Gamash down. The first time Gamash has been down as a professional. Gamash to his feet at eight, but it's all over. The referee James Santa has stopped the fight. What a performance by Tony Lopez, who has won the WBA Lightweight Championship. Tony Lopez, a two-time champion at 130 pounds in the junior lightweight division, has taken the lightweight title from Joey Gamash, and he's done it in Gamash's hometown of Portland, Maine. And for Gamash, his first defeat as a professional. He is now 29 and 1, while Lopez wins his 41st against three losses and a draw. Now look at the knockdown. That chopping blow by Lopez and Gamash shaken. And the right hand grazed Gamash. Gamash looking like he was ready to go, as Bobby mentioned. And Lopez continued the assault. Big right hand right there. Gamash went down. Referee James Santa counted to eight. And then Gamash got back to his feet, and Santa said, that is it. With 40 seconds left in round 11, Joey Gamash is stopped by Tony Lopez, the 29-year-old out of Sacramento, California. So Tony Lopez, who rarely has fought out of his home area, able to make the road trip. He comes here to Portland, Maine, and he comes up with the victory. For the official decision, let's go to the ring announcer. Referee Jim Santa stops the fight. 40 seconds into the 11th round, the new WBA lightweight champion of the world, Tony the Tiger Lopez. So, Tony Lopez 
has taken the WBA lightweight championship by stopping Joey Gamash at 220 of round 11. And now the crowd responding to Joey Gamash despite the loss. You can hear the cheers of Joey Joey. And Bobby Chez is all set alongside Tony Lopez. Let's go to Bob. Tony, what did you use to slow him down? He started out moving a lot. Later rounds, as we got into it, he stood flat footed. He actually fought you more. What did you do to slow him down? Well, actually, uh, I hurt him a couple times. When I went to the, bottom, to the body. I only went a couple times. I didn't go that much. But when I did go, it hurt him, and uh, it seemed to pay off. Okay, were you afraid of a decision here in Maine? Did you really want to make sure this fight was 100% knockout? No, I, I actually, well, I wanted to knock him out. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to do it early or late, but uh, I knew I was going to do it. And I always save energy for the last round. I always come out strong in the, in the end of the fight. All right. Congratulations again. We got to go back to Marv at ringside. All right, Bob. As uh, you mentioned, Tony Lopez certainly uh, had to be fearful of a decision here in uh, Portland. I'm looking at the uh, scorecard. Uh, two judges had it in favor of Gamash, 197-93, which is certainly questionable, and uh, another had the fight even. So, Tony Lopez has won the WBA Lightweight Championship. Marv Albert with Bobby Chez, now to Jim Lampley in New York. All right, thank you very much, Marv, and now with the early stoppage in the fight, we get a chance.